would you look at that? It's finally December, which means we can switch over the calendar. Let's check it out. And would you look at that? It's my old JCW. That's right, Mr. December, my F56 JCW back when I had it before I had to trade it in for the GP3. So if you got the Mini Mania calendar uh, with all the minis on it, uh, you should be seeing my car right about now. But yeah, uh, December's over. That means we can get rid of this beard. No shave November or Movember or whatever you call it. It's gone. And uh, we got to winterize the GP3 so that it's uh, safe and sound for the winter months here where I live. So as you can see, it's the start of winter here. It's gray, all the leaves are gone, and hopefully we'll have some snow here soon. And I'm not gonna get any winter tires from the GP3 or drive it out in a salt, which just eats your paint. Um, that's what the Countryman is for. So I'm gonna show you my process for winterizing the GP3 and what I'll call like a soft hibernation. And I call it that because I'm gonna start it periodically, uh, move it around, make sure I don't get any flat spots on the tires and just get the uh, coolant and oil uh, temperatures up. But if you wanna see a more detailed uh, winterization of a mini check out car creations youtube channel i'll leave a link down below they uh, he does a full uh i'd say deep hibernation of his jcw it's very detailed very cool check it out if you haven't seen it already but for gp3 number 0001 we're going to do uh, three main things first thing we're going to do is we're just going to clean it uh, and we're going to pay particular attention to the, the wheels and tires we're going to get those really nice and clean uh, to sit all winter long. Second, we're gonna stabilize the fuel. Um, it's gonna be sitting for a while. We don't want it to uh, go bad and, and uh, ruin the 301 horsepower engine inside. So we're gonna add some additives to that to keep that uh, good all winter long. And last but not least, we're gonna take care of the battery so that it doesn't go flat while it's sitting here. Um, even though we're gonna start it periodically, we still wanna make sure it's, uh, it's in good health while it sits all winter um, in the cold. So with that, let's get started. So I've already washed the outside of the car um, on a nicer day. So we all, all we have to do left is the wheels. And so we're gonna jack up the car. We got a little plug here to go right in the jack mounting point. And then we will uh, take the wheels off. We'll use the wheel builder that we built a couple of, uh, almost a year and a half ago now. And uh, we'll clean those wheels so that they're nice and clean for us in the spring. So we got our wheel cleaner here that we built. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description where you can see that. But yeah, it allows us to turn the wheel freely while we clean the back side of it. So let's go ahead and start cleaning it. So while we got the wheel off, let's uh, let's weigh it on the scientific bathroom scale and see how much it weighs. 39 pounds. So we got one wheel done, we'll put it back on the car and let's uh, do the same thing with the other next three. Okay, all wheels and tires have been taken off, cleaned, put back on, properly torqued. And so now we're gonna put up, uh, cut up some carpet and we're gonna put it down below the tires just to keep the, uh, a little barrier between the cold concrete and the wheels and tires themselves. And so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna properly inflate the tires and just go just a smidge above so that when that cold air uh, condenses, it, it, they're not 
super deflated. They're kind of just at where they should be. So let's spin this car around, cut up some carpet, park it on top. Okay, so we're parked on the carpet, the wheels are clean. We're now gonna check our air pressure and make sure everything looks good. We're gonna put it just slightly above what the uh, PSI is supposed to be at. And that way when the cold air condenses and it loses a few PSI, it's, it's still in the acceptable range and isn't too flat and gonna create a, a flat spot. But again, we're gonna move this car around uh, every so often to try and avoid that. So yeah, let's check the tire pressures, adjust as necessary. All right, so we've got the uh, tire pressures all checked. It's parked on the carpet, it's looking good. So now we're gonna go on to the fuel stabilizer just to make sure that the fuel doesn't go bad while it sits there, um, get all gunky, and then and, and in turn ruin that engine. So we're gonna put, uh, we got 10 gallons in the car. It's about where we want it to be. And we're gonna put the uh, fuel stabilizer in in accordance with uh, the instructions. And then we're gonna let it run for five minutes so it gets into the entire system. And uh, yeah, let's try and do this without making a mess. All right, so we've got it all in there. So let's go ahead and let this engine run for about five minutes. Got the exhaust pointed out, so we're not gonna choke ourselves out and uh, let that get into the system. So let's do it. So the car is running, it's got a few more minutes to go. Uh, the sun's starting to come out, and then after that's done, we'll start with the uh, battery tender device. So let's, uh, let's go start with that next. All right, so now we're on to the battery tender, and I've got this device from Mini itself. They were actually, surprisingly, this doesn't happen often, the best price out of uh, all the places that I looked in my usual mini shopping sites and then uh, mini.com as well. And so I got this and it came in this really cool tin. Check this out. So yeah, there's the charging device. Um, this really cool tin, it's got a mini brand on it. It's like a little uh, metal lunchbox. It's really cool. So I'm glad I, I ended up getting this in the end. So we're gonna plug this in, positive clamp to the positive terminal. Uh, negative clamp to actually the, the manual uh, that came with the car says to clamp it to the bolt on the strut tower So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna plug it in and then uh, that's gonna be uh, battery tender for the winter So let's get to it So as you can see, this comes with two options, um, some alligator clips and then some uh, bolts that you can actually uh, mount directly to the battery. I'm gonna move, be moving this around a few times over the winter, so I'm gonna go with the alligator clips because they're gonna be easier to uh, take on and off quickly and move it around, especially when it's cold out here and I don't wanna be out here for any longer than I have to. So let's go with that option. Um, they plug into the tender device via a, uh, a plug, so you just choose which, which set of clamps or, or bolts you wanna use. So uh, let's grab the alligators and we'll hook them up. So behind this uh, GP strut bar, we've got uh, the battery cover, positive terminal cover. There it is. Stay out of our way. Put the positive on there. They say to, they say to in the manual to clamp onto this bolt uh, on the tower, so I, I guess we'll do that. Uh, and get it so it's out of the way so we can close the hood. That looks good. And then uh, we'll just run this. We wanna to deform the top of the seal so we'll just run it through the bottom of the seal. Nice pro look there. And then we're gonna plug this into the tender device. So let's do that. Okay, that is plugged in. So now we can plug in the battery tender and let it do its job. 
So the battery is routed up through this, uh, there's a small channel right by the windshield wiper arm. I'm resting the battery device on, uh, on the windshield. Probably won't rest it on that. I'll rest it right here. And then I will plug it in um, to an outlet I have hanging right there. So I'm not gonna trip over anything. It's gonna be out of the way. And the charger device will be right here so I can see it. It's not gonna be underneath the car. So uh, it'll be very easy for me to see what the status is and if there's any fault codes. Um, right on the back, it gives you the op uh, indicator light operation. So amber and flashing are obviously problems and green light flashing, green light steady are uh, charging and charge complete. So let's go ahead and plug this in and we'll be done with the last step we wanted to do of the uh, winterization of GP3 number 0001, just in case you forgot which number I had. So the battery is charger is plugged in. Uh, you can see it right here. The cord isn't touching the paint anywhere. It's, uh, it's hanging from the top of the garage. So we should be good. Um, this does mean that it'll be a little difficult to put the car cover on, but uh, that's okay. Uh, I think this is this is a preferred setup, and so uh, yeah, let's do a quick wrap up of everything we did. Okay, so that's it. GP3 um, is ready for its soft hibernation a couple months in the garage during the winter, and uh, the Countryman is ready to go. It's got its snow tires on. So yeah, I'm gonna leave a lot of links down below. Um, some for Car Creations, his YouTube channel is great. He did a full winterization of his JCW. Um, the video to when we built that. Uh, wheel slash tire holder to make it easier to clean, a link to the battery tender device that I have, and uh, a link to my Instagram. So give me a follow there if you don't mind. And uh, yeah, that's it for this one. If you have any questions or comments on how you would do it differently, please leave them down below. And as always, when you see another mini, don't forget to wave. I'll catch you in the next one. One other quick note, uh, we take off the parking brake so that it's not gonna seize up while it sits still. So no parking brake, but it is in park.